Hi, I'm Michelle and today I'm going to teach you to prepare meatloaf for a chef. Okay, so meatloaf for a chef. So the I ground the meat. I, I pre-ground it. You can buy it at the supermarket ground if you'd like, but I think that you get a better quality if you decide you're going to grind it yourself. So we've got the beef and the pork ready to go. And then you're going to want, that's a lot of meat, so you're going to want lots of onions. So make sure you choose a large onion. And when I'm cutting it, I kind of think about what size of a hunk of onion I want in my mouth. So I'm going to cut this fairly coarse. Just take off the skin. Get up all of that. And then just do a coarse, a coarse chop on the onion. Watch your fingers. And then I've, um, I use six cloves of garlic. And the same thing with the garlic. It'll just be a coarse chop on the garlic and then have lots of nice garlicky flavor throughout the meatloaf. So when you have to peel six cloves of garlic, I'll show you a fun little quick way to slip them out of the skins. You just take the garlic blade on your cutting board that in and then just put your weight on it with and with the back of your knife you smash or flatten out the garlic and it slips right out of the skin. Ooh, those onions are strong. This works when the garlic's fresh. If you find that it's not working then your garlic might be a little bit old. But when they're nice and fat and juicy. So you can use a knife to cut your garlic or you can use a mini chop. I guess you could use a food processor or whatever you have, but I have this fantastic gadget that I've had for about 25 years. Be lost if anything happened to it. So we have two, four, five, and six. This is just me cheating. Okay, so that's one large onion, six cloves of garlic. Then you're going to use um, two pounds of beef and a pound and a half of pork. And so for the beef, I used um, a blade roast and uh, pork shoulder. So the pork shoulder is quite fatty and um, when, you, when I, you would grind it at home, so what happens is the fat distributes throughout the, the lean meat and it gives you a really nice texture once it's baked. So you have the onion, the garlic and three cups of breadcrumbs, Italian breadcrumbs. And so I use my hands, you can use a bowl if you want, a spoon I mean. It's, uh, so you see that? Just, I find it easier just to toss it with your hands. Okay, so we're using um, Italian parsley. So Italian parsley as opposed to curled parsley, which is what's probably more familiar in the supermarkets, but it has um, a more tender texture and the flavor is better. So you'd never see curly parsley in anything Italian. So when you're, when you're getting your herbs ready, I think um, a common mistake is to use the stem and all. You don't want to do that. You just want to use the leaves. So just take the little bit of extra time that's required to pull your leaves off. You'll need about a cup. So it takes a little bit of time, but it's well worth the effort of not putting those woody stems in there because you get a big hunk of wood in your mouth. Okay, and so once you have your leaves picked, then just gather the leaves as tight as you can. Just squish them all together like that. Make sure your knife's nice and sharp. And then just make nice little tiny cuts. Watch the ends of your fingers. Make sure that you're not going to get in trouble adding a finger to the meatloaf. And so then 
Now you've got a coarse chop. Take your knife and just quickly over the top of the parsley. You're not going to want this really, really fine. You want to be able to see the nice green speck throughout the meat, but you have to have a fairly good chop on it. So just draw it back in with your knife again. And that is about a cup. So that goes into the bowl. And then you're going to take two tablespoons of fennel seed. And this is probably not used that often in North America, but in Italy they use a lot of fennel. And the flavor is gorgeous in this meatloaf. So you be generous. But you do, if you don't have, if you didn't have a little grinding machine like this to grind your spices, you could use a mortar and pestle or you could actually put them inside a plastic bag and just pound them out with a, with a mallet. But this is really worth the investment. They're not that expensive and really worth it. So, so then I've got to grind about like that. Alrighty, so now we're going to take three large eggs. You can use large or you can use extra large. Or you... ah! <laughs> Finnegan, get out of that. I can't believe I just did that. Okay, so three large or extra large eggs. And you want to whisk them really well. Alright, and so then you're going to take half a cup of either tomato juice or V8 juice. Mix that right into the egg. And then half a cup of dry white wine. And I used Pinot Grigio. So that's your liquid. Okay, so that's a big mixture. To try and do that with a spoon would be pretty tough. However, if you're good with a spoon, you can, but I'm again, I'm going to use my hands. So first I'm going to get all of the dried ingredients mixed together. And so when I refer to the dry, it's the meat, the onions, garlic, the flat parsley, breadcrumbs, and the fennel. So you've got it really well distributed all throughout. It smells delicious. So you're going to want seasoning. And I find the easiest way to make sure that the seasoning gets throughout the entire meatloaf is to add it to the liquid portion. So I'm going to use, I'm using Malden sea salt. So it's a sea salt flake. I'm going to use... Three teaspoons. And then I'll give it some pepper. And it's just to taste what whatever amount of pepper you would like to use because you know your own taste and your family's taste, so whatever you like. And you can always salt and pepper it at the table after it's been baked. So you just add that, and then once again, you're gonna mix that together. You've got a really nice mixture there. And just sort of pick it up a little bit, make sure there's no liquid on the bottom of the bowl. And there you have it, okay. All right, so probably the trickiest part of making this meatloaf is rolling it. Because that, that's a big, big piece of meat to work with. So what I find works really well is to use a piece of parchment paper to help you. 
So you're going to take your meatloaf out of the bowl and place it on the parchment paper. And you have your pan, so you can basically, you can see how big your pan is. So you're going to flatten this out. So as if you were making a jelly roll. So you're going to make yourself a nice rectangle. It's really pliable, it's simple to do. And fairly thin, because when you roll it up, you, you don't you want sort of a nice even distribution of meat and not a great big hunk. Okay. So you're trying to have it the same thickness at the outer edge as it is in the center. So once you have the meatloaf spread out, um, this great big rectangle, you're going to take fresh mozzarella that I have sliced it about quarter inch thick and lay it all over the top, just as if you were making a pizza. So you're going to lay this. And so then when the meatloaf is rolled, it'll be rolled around that cheese and then once it's baked you've got this beautiful oozing fresh mozzarella inside the meatloaf. It's delicious. Take fresh basil leaves. And if it's, the leaf is that big, I would tear that in half and just scatter those throughout over the top, over the top of your meatloaf. So again, once it's rolled, you'll have the fresh basil on the inside. So it's, it's a beautiful combination when you use dried spice like fennel with a fresh fresh herbs like flat Italian parsley and basil. It's a gorgeous combination. In the original recipe, um, it calls for sun-dried tomatoes. Now, uh, I neglected to get sun-dried tomatoes and so I just did my own oven-roasted tomatoes this morning, which um, are nice to use. But if you can, if you can get the sun-dried tomato, they're, they're lovely. So, whatever you would like to do. If you decide you want to do the oven-roasted, it's just fresh tomato that's been cut in half, sprinkled liberally with salt and olive oil. I place them on parchment, put them in a 425 degree oven for about, about 20 minutes and then that's what you have. So now we're going to use the parchment paper to help us roll this meatloaf up. So let's make sure you get it nice and tight and then pull it away and then so you can see how the parchment paper makes this job a whole lot easier than if you were trying to do it all by itself. <laughs> pull that back. Alright, so we have a rolled meatloaf and so now I've still got paper wrapped around it. I'm going to pull that back so that I can lift it up not that easy. Place it in the pan and now I'm going to very carefully, but keeping it nice and tight, roll that over. Keep rolling it, pull it back and there we have a beautiful roll stuffed meatloaf for a chef. <laughs> so now it's going to go in the oven, 400 degrees, and then we'll finish it once it comes out. So now the uh, meatloaf has roasted for an hour. You can see it's got a nice crust on it. It smells amazing. So you're just going to finish it by adding more fresh mozzarella to the top of it. So it's going to give it a nice cheesy topping. So you just slice it a little bit thinner than you slice it for the inside. Lay it over the top, just like that. There you go. So, ready to go back in the oven until that cheese is melted. 
So here we have the roasted meatloaf. I'm going to take a slice off so that you can see what it looks like on the inside. And that's a pretty generous slice. You could certainly cut a smaller, a smaller portion. But if I was feeding Ralph, that would probably be the size I'd give him. So you can see it's beautiful. You can see how it's rolled. You can see the sun-dried tomatoes and the mozzarella and the flecks of parsley. It looks gorgeous. And so then just serving it with a little tomato sauce on the side. And there you have it. Meatloaf for a chef.